morning. Welcome to Fellowship Church Online. We are so excited that you're able to join us this Sunday. You're definitely in for a treat. My name is John, and this is my wife, Renisha. Hello. We hope you are staying safe and healthy during the pandemic, and we totally care about the safety of all of our viewers here at Fellowship. It is our endeavor to love God, love people, and impact the world. And the way that we are learning about doing that last week and then again this week is that we're learning about how to be a catalyst. And so that's the sermon series. Last week we oh, got to chat. Oh, no, wait, listen. It is good, y'all. It's definitely it's good. It's so good. Perfect. Definitely good. Okay. And so we <laughs> learned about how to be a catalyst, how it is that we are supposed to not just store, but to pour out. And so we got to invite some of you guys to think about where is it that you're called to pour? And we're going to continue on that in this week. But first, before we get into praise and worship, we're going to have a brief word of prayer. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity just to be here on today, God. We thank you so much for your service, God, for your grace, for your mercy. Lord, we know that a lot of things are going on in the world, and it's it's weird. We're having earthquakes that we haven't had before. We're, we're in the midst of this pandemic that has affected the entire world. God, and other things are going on, like explosions in Lebanon. But Lord, we know that you are mighty. You are sovereign. Lord God, that if you have us in the palm of your hand, we are okay. So right now we turn this service over to you, God. We ask that you bless our viewers wherever they're viewing from. Touch them in a mighty way. Touch praise and worship. Touch Pastor Tony, Lord God, and just have your way. We love you. We bless you. We honor you. And we sit in expectation. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Now let's get ready for praise and worship. Yes, Lord. Our God is an awesome God. 
thank you for the privilege to be able to tell you, God, that we love you, that we trust you, and we believe you, God. We put our trust and our confidence in you. Hallelujah, Jesus. And this is how we fight our battles. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. And this is how I fight my battles.
morning. I am here this morning just to bring you some back to school encouragement. Ready or not, guys, it is here. School starts tomorrow. And I just wanted to reassure you, guess what? There's going to be a lot of frustration. Your past words won't work. But I want you to give grace to the teachers, to the administration, give grace to your students, give grace to your children. Guys, this, we're still in a pandemic. We're all in this together. We have never even since I've been an educator, done school like this before. So we, I just want everybody to remind, just do the best you can. Parents do the best you can. Students do the best you can. Families do the best you can. The teachers are going to do the best you can, guys. And we're going to still make this 2020, 2021 school year just the best year ever, okay? And like we would do in church, every time that we gather together um, before school starts, we come together and just pray. So I want to do that today. I want to bind up all these things that are going to cause frustration and cause people not to feel like they can do well. And I want to just play a special blessing over everybody that's involved with education today. So let's go to God in prayer. God, we just thank you again for all that you are doing, God. Again, we are in the midst of a pandemic, God, and we've got to start school on tomorrow, God. So I just ask you right now for giving peace to children. God, they don't know and understand what's all going on, God. There may be fear and there may be different apprehension things that they are dealing with right now, God, and missing their friends, God. But give peace to their spirits, God. Give peace to families and and parents who are trying to figure out they're working full time and they're trying to figure out how am I going to be all that I need to be to my children, God, and even to administrators and teachers, God. God, even I speak for myself, God, we're trying to do the best we can with all these different things and different systems, God, in the name of Jesus. God, be God in homes. Be God in schools, God. Be God even across Zooms and, and Google Meet and God and Teams, God. Be God in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, God, that our children will excel, God. They'll learn to read, they'll write, they'll learn to have do whatever they need to do in chemistry and algebra, God, and Spanish, God. Whatever subject it is, God, that they will excel it in the name of Jesus. What they don't know, your spirit will God, and what they don't know, your God, give parents wisdom and teachers just to give them the help they need, God. We thank you, God, for love, God, that covers all in the name of Jesus God there will be no lack in homes God God you will come through in the name of Jesus God and everybody will have God what they need when they need to have it God so again we just ask you to have your way God you're the God of education hallelujah God you're the God of these schools you are the head God so we thank you God that teachers and principals God and even our state officials continue just to look to you for guidance we know even after the nine weeks God there's got to be another decision God but you know what's best God we're going to take each day hallelujah day by day God so again we just give you thanks, God. The children start this year with praise. The teachers start this year with praise. Praise the parents start this year with praise, God, because in all things, God, we're going to give you thanks and praise. God, God, again, we thank you for this time. We thank you for covering, God. The parent, we bind up suicide and all these things that, that may try to enter homes and children feeling like they're by themselves and that nobody understands. God, God, you, your perfect will be, will be done in each and every situation, in each and every classroom and home, God. We we love you, God, and we know that nothing takes you by surprise, so we knew that we would be here at this time and this place. So again, we love you with everything we have. We trust you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Y'all have a great school year, okay? A's, B's, God, God, you're going to give you exactly what you need. Have a great year. Hello again. We pray that you enjoyed a praise and worship, that the spirit is still moving around your house or wherever you're located. Listen, we want to give you some ways that you can stay connected to us. Sunday morning is not the only time that you can hear Pastor Tony's sermons. You can go back and replay them. You can share them with family and friends. Um, and there's going to be some announcements coming down the pipeline that you're, wanna, you're going to want to know more about. So we're going to tell you how to stay connected today. So first, you can search for us on Facebook by searching at The Fellowship. You can also follow us on Instagram at Fellowship Church WS. And you can go to our website, the address is thefellowshipws.org. And now we also continue in the vein of worship by giving the opportunity for us to give offering. We know that it's more blessed to be able to give than it is just to receive. And so mm -hmm. we want to give ourselves the opportunity to actually continue and pour out. These are the ways that you can give. First, you can follow the link that is right below in the chat box. Secondly, you can also use our text to give function. All you do is text the word give to the number 844-945-1533. 
Once again, 844-945-1533. Just text the word give, put a space, and then the amount that you would like to give. And as always, you can also give through our app. As always, we love you and we're praying for you and thank you so much for your giving. And now it's time to hear a word from Pastor Tony. What's up, God's people? Come on in the room. We're so glad that you decided to join us here today. My name, in case you don't know it, is Pastor Tony. I'm the lead pastor here at Fellowship Church, and we are so glad that you decided to spend your valuable time here with us today. Listen, we are in the middle of a new series that we call Catalyst, and I hope you were blessed with last week's message. But we're going to go a little deeper today, and for the sake of conversation, let's redefine Catalyst. A catalyst is a person or a thing that precipitates an event. I broke it down last week and talked about the fact that God wants us to be a starter. And we posed you with a question last week that what in your life is not finished all because you have not started? Knowing that we are the embodiment of Jesus Christ, knowing that God has placed us in this world as an ambassador of the kingdom of God, and the only way that the kingdom of God is going to expand, the only way that the kingdom of God is going to take further territory is not that we're waiting on God to do do something. God is waiting on us to start something so that he can step in. And so uh, I want to challenge you over the next couple of weeks to be a starter to be a starter. Don't worry about how, how the end, end, uh, end result is going to be. Um, we talked about last week that God is the one who is responsible for the end result. All we need to do is supply the obedience. All we need to do is supply the faith and leave the results up to God. So my, my question to you is, what have you started this week? Uh, what, what have you instigated? What have you stirred up? I'm, t- I'm not talking about just making crazy trouble, but last week we talked about uh, being in good trouble. Let's start something. Uh, let, let's shake up the status quo and let's do something so that God can be glorified and so that the enemy's kingdom can be taken, taken down. Uh, um, this week, scripture, basis scripture, we're going to start from Romans 12 and 2. Very familiar passage of scripture. Um, So we're going to start at Romans 12 and 2, and it says this. It says, and be not conformed to this world, (laughs) but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now, most people uh, focus on this scripture about the renewal of the mind part. And that is essential. But I want to talk about the the A clause of it and says, and be not conformed to this world. You have to understand that when we come into the family of God, when we come into the kingdom of God, we become anti-world. We have, gone, we have transitioned from the world of darkness and, 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 uh, and depravity, and we have been translated over into the kingdom of God through the miraculous work of Jesus, Jesus going to the cross and him shedding blood. We have transformed from being sinly, from being worldly, to being godly and being holy. And so our existence should be anti-world. Word of God even says that if we love this world and the things of this world, we can't even fully love God. God said you got to make, you got to choose, you got to choose a master. You got, you can't serve one and love the other. And so the fact of the matter is, people of God, that we have been called to be nonconformists. So if we're going to be catalysts, we have to know that we cannot fit into uh, the, the forms and the boxes that this world sets for us. And so my topic for today to go along with the Catalyst series is break the rules. God has called us to break the rules. I want you to understand that God is a rule breaker. I'm not telling you, and let, let, me, let, let me preface everything. I'm going to say this. Pastor Tony is not telling you to go, out here, and go out, out here and be a vigilante. I'm not telling you to break the rules. I'm not telling you to show up late and cuss your boss out because you're not going to come to me talking about, <laughs> Pastor Tony, I need you to help me because I did what you said and I lost my job. What I'm telling you is there are norms, there are boxes, there are paradigms that this world sets for us and tell us that you can only do this because you're a woman. You can only do this when you're a minority. You can only do this. You can't do this at this age. And what, what, what God has given us example after example in his word, in his word is that I am a norm breaker. Look at this, what God. Look, uh, Jesus was standing out on the water. And Peter, and Peter saw it, and the rest of the, the disciples thought it was a ghost. 
And he said, Lord, if it be, if it be you, bid me to come. Now, the law of gravity and buoyancy and all kind of uh, phys physics stuff that, I'm not, that I can't explain to you says that Peter should not have been able to walk on water. Yet and still, because of his faith, God broke a rule when he exercises faith. If you don't believe it, what about, let, let's talk about Abram. Abram was well stricken in age and so was his wife. But yet and still, at their old age, he didn't, he didn't get them at the prime in their 20s. He waited until they were old and 80 and 90 and, and getting into the hundreds. And this God, now God said, now I'm going to tell you you're going to be the father of many, many nations. And they laughed of it. They laughed about it. And they tried to fix it on their own way. And they made a mess. But God broke a rule. He, wrote, he broke the rule of biology that says that you're not supposed to be able to have children that late. And what about one of Jesus' first miracle? He was, at a, he was at a wedding feast, and they ran out of wine. He said, his, his, his mama came to him and said, Jesus, hey, I need you to do something. He said, mama, my time hadn't come yet. She said, whatever Jesus tell y'all to do, y'all just do it. He said, go get me a couple things of water. He blessed it, and the, Jesus blessing that water started a fermentation process without fruit, without apples, without grapes, without muscadine, without plums or anything. And he created, he, he changed the law of physics and biology and fermentation. And because Jesus spoke over, he broke a rule and water turned into wine. You don't believe me? I got one more example for you. There were three Hebrew boys that would not bow and would not bow. And the king said, look, y'all y'all are my favorites. Y'all found favor to, with me, but y'all got, got to bow or y'all making me look bad. And they said, hey, say, say, king, we love you and all, but we can't do it. He said, well, I'm going to have to throw y'all in the fire. Anybody that gets thrown in the fire is supposed to get killed. Anybody. As a matter of fact, they, they turned up the fire so hot that the people that threw them in got killed by the fire. So how is it that three young men that would not bow and would not, uh, would not turn the, their allegiance to God uh, off, how is it that they were able to walk around in the fire? God is a rule breaker. He's a rule breaker. And if God is a rule breaker, and if God does not adhere to norms and, and, and the status quo, and if we are made in his image, then we too should be rule breakers. For definition, a rule breaker is refusing to adhere or to succumb to established norms. What is it that society in this world says that you cannot do, but you know that God put it in your heart? God is challenging you to break a norm. Got another scripture here, Luke the fifth chapter. Got, just got a couple of examples I want to show with you. Luke the, Luke the fifth chapter, 17 verse, it says this. And on one of the days while Jesus was teaching, some proud religious law keepers and teachers of the law were sitting by him. They had come from every town in the countries of Galilee and Judea and in Jerusalem. The power of the Lord was there to heal them. Some men took a man that was not able to move his body to Jesus. He, carried, he was carried on a bed. They looked for a way to get him in the house where Jesus was, but they could not find a way to take him in because so many people were there. Look at what they did, y'all. They made a hole in the roof over where Jesus stood. They, they lowered the bed with the sick man on it down right in front of Jesus, and when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, friend, your sins are forgiven. He, this, this lame man, had some friends that were willing to break the rules because they knew that if we could just get him in front of Jesus, the risk of somebody arresting us, the risk of us looking crazy, the risk of us damaging somebody's property and us being killed, we are willing to take that risk because if we could just get our friend in front of Jesus, it is worth breaking the rules. And so my challenge to you is, who said that limits were limits? Oh, my goodness. Who said that limits were limits? Who said that your age is too young? Who said that your ethnicity is not good enough? Who said that at your advanced age it's too late to start that business or it's too late to start that foundation? Who said that limits were limits? God is the final arbiter. God is the final decider. He is the one. If God spoke it to you, he took everything about you into consideration when he put that thing in your heart. 
But a lot of times when God speaks the thing to our heart, we, we, we start looking for every reason like Moses did. Oh, I, I stutter and I, I can't speak and, and, uh, and, and, you know, I'm a fugitive and I can't go back. Look at my record and look at my baby out of wedlock and look at my advanced age and, and I, I don't have a degree in that. And I, I, we look for the, all the reasons I can. God saying, I considered all that when I called you. And it could it be possible that God wants to get his greatest glory because you don't fit the norm. Abraham didn't fit the norm. Moses didn't fit the norm. As a matter of fact, God used, the majority of people that God used were people who were not fit. God called Saul, one who was persecuting the church, to be the very one who was really the father of the modern day church. So you that feel the most inadequate, you're probably the most qualified one that God wants to use. God is a rule breaker. From the example of these young men that tore a hole in the roof, one thing we can extract from it is this, that true catalysts, they don't take away, they make away. And I want you to look around and say, God, I know you put this thing in my heart. I'm not going to get a reliance in self, but I am not going to let the fact that, there are, that, that, that I don't have access to be a reason that I give up. These friends did not give up. They, they created a way when there was no way because of their desperation. And they knew that if we could just get him in front of Jesus. Jesus didn't acknowledge what they did. He's like, man, what, can you imagine you preaching, you teaching, and all of a sudden the roof, the roof starts getting peeled back and somebody drops down in front of you? Most of us preachers say, hey, wait a minute, this is out of order. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. But Jesus said, look, Man, y'all's faith and y'all's perseverance to get to me has gotten my attention. Could it be possible that God, the reason God hasn't showed up because we haven't done anything yet to get his attention? They got in front of Jesus. He said, your, because of your faith today, everything is wiped clean. I hope you're being blessed by this. The next scripture is Esther, the fourth chapter in the 14th verse. And just to give you a little background about Esther, Esther was, she was born of the house of Israel and in the family of, of the children of Israel. And, uh, and, 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 the, and the king is, is Xerxes the first. And, you know, his, 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 his first vast die, he had gotten rid of her and he was looking for a new wife and he had, quote unquote, a beauty pageant. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and Esther was so beautiful, he, she won a favor, and, but she concealed the fact that she was an Israelite. She concealed so many times we, we, we hide our light under a bush or we don't, we, we don't reveal who we are so that we can, get, we can get into certain rooms and we can get certain access that if people really knew how much I love God, if people really knew how, how radical I am in my faith, people would look at me crazy. And so I, I've, I've got to play the part. I've got to be political. I've got to, I've got to dress right. I've got to act right. I've got to do all the things so that I can advance because after, after all, this is the way of the world. When God told us in Romans, don't conform to this world. But um, her, 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 her uncle had said, hey, there is a plan that Haman has, and he's, going, he's, he's plotting a plan uh, to make sure that we all get killed to eradicate us. And, and because you found favor with the king, we need you to go, and we need you to go and be our emissary. We need you to go and to, and to plead our case and let him know what Haman's plot is. She said, look, I can't do it. I mean, um, you know, uh, uh, th this was a very misogynistic kind of time. She's like, I can't go to the king and, and, and without him uh, 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 yielding the, the scepter to me to come ask him. And, and, and if anybody comes to him with an outside of protocol, then, then, uh, then I, I, I risk being killed. I risk being hung. I risk going to the guillotine and getting my head chopped off. And look, and look at his response right here in, in, in 4 and 14. He said, for if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise from the Jews from another place. Meaning they say, look, this is your moment. You, re you realize that you, you didn't get elevated just for yourself. You got elevated for the people you're attached to. And can I tell somebody the reason that God put that on your heart, the reason God has shown you favor, the reason God has elevated you, it's not for you. You are the Joseph of your family. The reason God has elevated you from the pit to the palace is not just for you. It's for your brother and your kindred that, that, that are left behind that in a time of famine, 
You are the source. You are the plug, so to speak, that, that, that connects people to God. And can I tell you, everything that you have, everything that you do, every blessing that God has given you, it's not about you. It's, it's about who you're connected to. You are the conduit to which that is going to be the life preserver of the people that are attached to you, the people in your neighborhood, the people that you work with, the people that you encounter in the market and in the store and in the marketplace. It's not about you. God is using you, but it's not about you. It's not about the hammer. The hammer is the tool to hit the nail in to build it, to build the structure. And when we realize that what we're going through and what we're called to, it's not about us. He's using us, but it's not about us. And when God needs to get his plan and his way accomplished, he will break rules. He will break the law of gravity. He will break the law of biology. He will break the law of physics to get accomplished what he wants to get accomplished. And yes, he'll use even you to do it. But he challenged her. He said, but you and your father's house will perish. Basically, you say, hey, you're going to call yourself trying to preserve yourself. If you don't do it, your family is still going to suffer. He said, who knows that you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this? You got to realize, everybody said, look, I wish 2020 would just come over, and I wish we had a reset button, and can we turn it off and do a hard reset and, and do it over? Can we fast forward? No. God had placed these visions. He's placed everything in your heart for such a time as this. Some of you say, God, why would you plant this in my heart in a time that seems inconducive to it? God said, because I want to break some rules. If he had called you in a time of plenty, you would, you would be thinking it's you doing it. You would think it's, it'd be your savvy and, and the good things that you do. God said, no, I'm calling you in a time of famine. I'm calling you in a time where things are and where up is down and, and down is up and left is right and right is left. I'm calling you in a time where chaos because I need you to be a stabilizing force because my kingdom, it, there is goodness and there is stability in it. And while everything is running haywire all over the world, you are going to be an oasis in the middle of the desert. And God said, I want to break a rule and I want to break it through you. But look at what Esther had to face. Following God does not equal safety. We always say, oh, there's, there's no safer place than, you know, un under the shadow of his wings shall he hide me. Yes, but being a catalyst, stepping out, because you have to understand, in order for her, in order for her to be an advocate for her people that she was, she was related to, she was going to have to reveal, I'm not who you think I am. Those, those Israelites that you're using, that, that, that you're persecuting, that you're using to build your temples and, the, and, 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 and work for all this free labor, I'm one of those people that you're persecuting every day. And stepping out and being a catalyst, it exposes who you are. And I want you to know it's scary because if I step out and, and I be the catalyst that God has called me to be, people are going to find out that I'm one of those crazy Jesus followers. People are going to find out that, that I'm a radical believer in God and that I believe that God can break rules and I'm going to look crazy and it may be dangerous and it, 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 it may be a hazard to my health and everything going forward, but I want you to know that if God calls you to do it, the risk is worth it. Exposure and the revelation as to who we really are in Christ is worth the risk. There is a role that only you can play, and the world is waiting for you to play your role. I want you to know that God wants to break a rule, and he wants to break it through you. I don't care what the rule is. I don't care if it's your age. I don't care if it's your stage. I don't care if it's your criminal record. I don't care if it's your, uh, your credit record. I don't care what it is, but God wants to break a rule. And he needs a catalyst to do it. All God needs is a willing vessel. Are you willing to take the risk? Because a risk for the cause of the kingdom is a risk worth taking. I'm finished. But I wanted to encourage you that you may feel like your back is against the wall. You may feel like that God was just toying with you and he's almost taunting you with all these dreams and all these visions and all these big plans in your heart because what you see around you, you don't have the ingredients to make it. God said, I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, didn't consider what you had and the ingredients that you had 
when I called you. I just need a vehicle that I can break a rule with. You can't break the rule of speeding if you don't have a car to speed with. God said, I need a vehicle to break a rule with. And I believe that you are the very one that God wants to use to establish his kingdom, just like he did with Esther, to break a rule and to, and to get in front of people to, so God can show his miraculous power, just like those friends that, that cut a hole in the roof. God wants to use people. He doesn't need your ability. He needs your availability so that he can break a rule and show that he is God, even in times like this. I'm telling you that this time, well, we're, we're getting new death tolls every day, and, 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 and this is crazy season in politics, and all the calamity is going on. This is the proper, and this is the prime moment where God wants to show that he is God and that there is none like him and that he is the ultimate rule breaker, and he wants to break a rule through you. Come on, let's pray. God, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, that you have called us to do exploits. You have called us to do great things for your kingdom. And sometimes in us accomplishing those things, you're going to have to break some rules, God. You have to break the rules of age and stage and physics and biology, God. But, Lord, we're, we're, we're not going to try to be you and try to figure out how you do it. Some of us are just too nosy. wants to know the end of the Lord. You called us just to be available, to be a tool that you can use to break a rule, God. So, Lord, we just yield ourselves to what you want to do, God. Lord, we don't know, we don't know how you're going to use us. Or, 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 or and in what function and in front of who, but Lord, we just make ourselves available, Lord, because the only way that your kingdom expands, the only way that your kingdom advances is if you have willing vessels that are willing to be participants in breaking the rule, God. So we thank you, Lord, that, you've, that, you, saw, that you saw fit, Lord, you've seen value in us. Lord, that you would want to use us to establish your kingdom. God, so we yield, and our answer is already yes. Yes to what you want to do. Yes to how you want to use us, God. And, Lord, we declare and we decree, Lord, that we will win in the end, Lord, because you are for us. And if you be for us, no man, no system, no political, no enemy can ever be against us and win. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be rule breakers, God. Allow us to buck the norm. Allow us to never to succumb to societal norms to say we can or we cannot do a thing, God. With you, all things are possible, God. Lord, we bless you. We love you. And we thank you that from this message, we are stirred to be catalysts, God, and not look and not, and not be encumbered by the rules, but we will break the rules in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. We pray that you were blessed by this message today. We pray that it was a blessing. It has challenged you. To, uh, to be a rule breaker and to do what God has called you to do. We bless you. We love you. Have a blessed, blessed week and, and find some rules to break for God's kingdom. Amen. We love you. God bless you. Peace. Break the rules. This week in learning how to be a catalyst, we learned how important it is not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, mm -hmm. to actually set ourselves up to be used by God in ways that the world and biology and yeah. all the things that we think is how his things are supposed to work uh, are not able to work because yeah. God is supernatural and God can do supernatural things. Oh, my goodness. He said your limits aren't your limits. Ah, I love that. I know that there are so many places in my own life, and I'm sure you battle with that too, where it's like, ah, I can't do that. I can't go there. And I'm sure that they thought that when they got to the Red Sea. I'm sure that they thought there was no other way. But God made a way. He broke a rule for them, and he will break rules for you. He will get that blessing to you. And it's important to remember that he doesn't need your ability he needs your availability. So wherever you feel like you're lacking and you can't and you're not good enough and whatever else, God already has that taken care of. So if you haven't made the choice to make God your own, if you haven't said, Jesus, I want you to come into my life so that way I can do those things that I don't think I'm able to do, we're going to give you that opportunity right now. Bow your heads to pray with me. Dear God, we thank you so much that you are the God that makes a way when there seems to be no other way because you are the author of this entire world, that you are the author of the rules. And so you're able to bend it in our favor whenever it is that you please. And so we thank you for that, for ways that you've made for us in the past, even when we haven't acknowledged them. And now, God, at this moment, on this day, 
we are acknowledging that we need you. We need the author of this entire world to come into our hearts and our lives so that we can have that same power that allowed Jesus to raise from the grave on the third day inside of us so that we also may raise to new life after death, but also so that we may be strengthened in this world to be catalysts, Mm -hmm. so that we can be strengthened in this life to allow the Holy Spirit to use us to be all that God has called us to be. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now look, if you just prayed that prayer, and if you just accepted Jesus into your heart right now, we welcome you into the body of Christ. There's a number that's actually on the screen, and there's a minister that you can talk to to actually get more information about that looks like and to get plugged in, and we certainly welcome you. And also, look, guys, if you have been convicted by this week, by last week, if you haven't got to listen to last week, go back and listen to last week. But we also want to give you the opportunity to connect with us. Maybe there's certain ways that you feel like you're called to be a catalyst and you need help with it or you want to share with us. Please follow the little link that's on the uh, chat box below and you'll actually be able to connect with us as well. Amen and amen. This brings us to the end of our service. We thank you so much for tuning in today. We hope that you liked, commented, shared. Please share with your family, with your friends. And listen, be a catalyst. Find a way to challenge yourself to be a catalyst. And if you need help, there's the link. Reach out to us. We'll we'll talk to you, chat with you. So until next week. We'll see you then. See you then. Bye.